Hi! I'm pretty tired. If you've not noticed by now, uh, this week has been pretty crazy for me and really scrounging up a lot of information from really a bunch of different companies. It was already a busy week planned ahead of me, but then something happened on Monday. Valve decided it was the perfect day to release a brand new beta, 1.22 if I remember correctly. And with all brand new subversions, there's always something in there for me to look for, data mine, and try to figure out and speculate what it means or what is coming. And there's actually quite a bit in this one, so yeah, here's the video to pretty much show off all the data mining and all the findings I, well, found for that. If you really appreciate this content, please uh, become a patron on my Patreon, bradsmells.com slash Patreon. If you don't appreciate this kind of work, then I don't know why you're here, and you can go do this yourself if you think I'm so bad at this. Yeah. Alright, first off the bat, I will say that there is some slight hardware or future Valve hardware references, but not too many. This one had more to do with like a lot of upcoming features and really a visual and feature overhaul for Steam VR. If you don't know what I'm talking about, a couple years ago, I can't believe it's already been almost a couple years, Valve hinted at a Steam VR 2.0 in a sort of looking at over the year posts on Steam. They basically said Valve was hard on work on a huge new user experience for VR users with their platform. We never really got that, uh, up until now at least. But it really does feel like the stuff that I'm finding in this new update really do sort of sort of correlate to something like that. But first, we're gonna start with some of the smaller stuff and work our way up to some of the bigger stuff because, um, yeah, all this stuff is important. And I really want to give my opinions on each thing. Here are my notes because I don't think you can expect me to remember everything, especially when I am half awake. <laughs> now, the first thing is probably a small improvement to your overall experience, uh, especially if you start. Accumulating, accum accumulating <laughs> a lot of different games or maybe playing a lot more VR games in Steam VR. Currently the library button or real area in Steam VR is very limited. It basically shows all the most recent games you played with no way to change that or edit it. But according there's a new string in the application info manifest that will allow you to have a library priority for an app ID. Again, my belief is this is very similar to being able to set a favorites, uh, like maybe a shelf of favorite games or VR or AR experiences to be able to easily get there um, to that app even though if you've not played it for a while. Of course, it's crazy that something like that hasn't been in Steam VR for a while, but you know, that's just the way it is. When I showed this string off and kind of talked about it with some of the other people that helped me with this, they were kind of talking about how this was kind of related to some of the stuff we saw built for Steam Deck and the UI for that. Yeah, I think that's probably true. I think that a lot of the stuff that we're seeing being built for the overall uh, Steam OS, Steam Deck UI and all that stuff, I think a lot of that is going to be ported over to, for VR and Steam VR. I've expected that actually for a while now. It makes sense because the current Steam VR is kind of built on the basis of the old big picture mode and the new Steam Deck UI stuff is also being transitioned to the Steam desktop big picture mode, which the VR thing is built on. You know, Valve's a small indie company, right? They can't do multiple UIs at once, they gotta port everything over. Now this is something very technical, I just kinda wanted to bring it up because we don't really know what this is for, so, you know, just a speculation or maybe something for computer nerds in the, the, the comments section to speculate more about and nerd out about. So these strings I'm about to talk about are only found in a libprism file, um, basically a library of different strings that uh, the prism layer, which is not used yet in SteamVR, it's an internal layer. We'll talk a little bit more about what I think that layer does. But this layer is for an upcoming feature set that will be new to SteamVR and probably their new hardware as well, if I had to guess. So it seems like Valve wants to be able to um, better control and set and, and communicate between processes and the process IDs for each thing. And this would go for every operating system that SteamVR is supported for. Windows, Linux, mostly just those two, obviously. And yeah, it's just a little bit more things that SteamVR can control. Um, again, not sure why they would want to do this, but again, I think it's for inter-process inter communication, maybe stuff related to uh, mixed reality, but I, don't, I really don't know. Another technical thing, but it's very interesting and really we can only guess what it's for. I, I have some big opinions on what it's for. So there was some new stuff added to uh, actually the Lighthouse drivers, which was very surprising. 
and the library for Prism, which both these things, usually when stuff are added to the lighthouse drivers, that means they are for a Valve device or a future Valve device. That's how we found references to Deckard in the first place. Um, and yeah, everything that's internal for hardware will be added to that. And again, Prism is also something that's upcoming. These strings are bytes per compressed block, uh, bytes per texel, bytes required, uh, is compressed format, uh, number of compressed blocks, a lot of stuff related to texture compression and stuff related to that. And they're using a Vulkan type video format. Now, whenever a new uh, sort of hash comes out like this, and there's a lot of strings that really just, we can't really get an idea what they might be using it for, and it's clearly not being used in that beta, I like to kind of back up my uh, ideas with the patents that they've been releasing up until now, since at least the index or even before then, because this device and all the systems for this device have been planned in pre-production uh, for a while now. So I think it's time to talk about what Prism might be or what I've been thinking Prism is for the last maybe three months. So again, Prism is a layer that is internal to Valve right now. It was added last year with all the uh, Valve Deckard strings. It's just been implemented and strings have been added to it over time. And what I believe that Prism is going to do uh, effectively is communicate with the standalone chip inside the Valve Deckard or Valve's next headset. My belief is Valve's next headset is going to have an SoC of some sorts, at least built into the front for sure. Um, I found leaks related to a Qualcomm chip that was already in the Valve Deckard prototype of some sort that was leaked in a version of SteamOS. And there's patents talking about how um, this chip or hardware inside the headset will have something called a image uh, data display manager on the HEMD that can do a lot of different things, um, but more specifically, decoding encoded information. This is very important because we're talking about how the fact I believe that uh, Valve Decker will be using 4K per eye micro OLED displays. That is a lot of data that has to be transmitted through even wire, um, not just wirelessly, to be able to actually have that uh, amount of data per eye. Because we're talking about 8K and we're talking about HDR values here, just high resolutions. And while the display I believe that they're using does have some um, actual bandwidth compensation outside the foveated area, outside the middle of the window on the device. Um, you still need some more stuff to be able to allow more computers to be able to run these high resolution displays better. And uh, a patent actually goes in to talk about how, yeah, they could be able to compress blocks and send that blo uh, compressed blocks through the data cable or wirelessly and allow the uh, image display manager or whatever on the actual HMD to encode it, uh, apply all the reprojection that's also sent via the computer. And this is very important because later on I'm gonna be talking about something called remote frame timings, which is also something that's in this patch. This patent and other patents related to eye tracking or gaze tracking technology also talk about fovea rendering and different ways to be able to apply the actual eye tracking to this compression algorithm and everything related to this. But also, they also kind of have the idea of being able to do that for tessellations. I've seen a lot of patents, um, not just from Valve, but from a lot of companies, where they can uh, tessellate a 3D model. Tessellating a 3D model is basically um, re uh, adding, removing triangles to get a better uh, quality of 3D. Like if you lower a, a model quality in a game, for example, it's going to look more blocky, right? Because they, they, they're rendering less triangles. Well, um, new strings were added to actually allow a sort of uh, rendering or what looks to be dynamic rendering of tessellation for VR models in Steam VR. This is in the VR client file. And I do believe this is related to um, a possible eye tracking or foveate rendering feature, just like the last thing, again, could be applied to a foveate gaze tracked rendering system. I know that's all very confusing stuff, way, way out there, but let's get to something a little more uh, tangible and understandable for people. So I've been saying that a lot of headsets, uh, VR headsets from now forward are not going to just be VR headsets. They're also going to have a lot of focus on mixed reality or AR through VR pass through. Valve is actually not going to miss out on that as well. There's a lot of patents showing interest of that exact features of AR through VR. I'm probably going to put an image of just some UI elements that is in another Valve patent showing that, yeah, there's going to be AR from Valve's next headset. And they've been adding new systems related to pass-through cameras, um, but the most newest one is we have a VR camera pass-through internal. 
and uh, an interface function for that. This is found in both the Lighthouse drivers and the VR client. Again, that, when stuff is in Lighthouse drivers, that usually means hardware is involved. Up until this point, uh, pass-through cameras or anything related to the cameras on the index would use a different function related to what I believe was called um, tracked cameras. So this is a totally new way of um, being able to access the cameras on a headset and probably apply AR and a lot of other cool stuff related to that. It adds up a whole new possibilities for Steam to not just branch, uh, have, have Steam VR be for VR, but also allow people to create uh, PC AR apps because we're gonna see a lot of people creating pass-through VR AR apps on things such as Metacambria or the Apple headset. But imagine what kind of stuff you can do with the actual computer um, under your desk with a lot more uh, processing power and apply that to pass-through AR. You do a lot more things for sure and I think Valve does not want to miss out on the chance of being able to add AR to their store. Now let's talk about dashboard overlays. You might kind of recognize those. Um, if you ever use uh, OpenVR advanced settings or anything related to that, they're basically just like extra things you can add to the dashboard. Usually they're relegated into a tiny section on the bottom left. You have to click them to actually open them and you're very limited of how you can interact with them. Well, it seems like Valve is actually going to uh, restructure the overlays for the dashboard to allow a lot more capabilities and also be able to apply them to your actual space or controllers. VR dashboard executable already running was a string that was added as sort of an error, but also dashboard overlay created and dashboard overlay destroyed, which means it seems like apps can even create and destroy overlays on the spot for things. I don't know how you would use that, but that sounds very interesting. A more notable point is if you had something like a, a Twitch chat overlay, for example, you could uh, add that to your Steam VR, and I believe that just similar to how desktop mode on Steam VR, where you can actually open your monitor in the VR setting and actually uh, create windows and actually snap those windows to your hand or in the actual VR space, I think that will be able to be applied for overlays as well. Um, that will be a very nice slice, of, uh, you know, quality of life feature. It does seem like something that Valve would be, like to add when they are working on a new overhaul of user experience. There's also something brand new clearly in the works for the dashboard uh, related to a theater of some sort. I know it's related to the dashboard because they put these new icons inside of the actual um, dashboard icons folder. Usually when you uh, see icons or images put into certain folders, you know what they're going to be used for. I hope it's something like a video player or maybe even a sort of, if you have pastor cameras, you can kind of... <laughs> overlay that into a wall on your, your 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 virtual space or if you think about if you're if they're focusing on mixed reality it would be cool to have a theater uh, window you can pop up place behind you in like a giant wall empty wall or something and just always have it in your ar space as well as your vr space you can just switch between them instantly that's what i think would be really useful and what would uh, be added for a feature like this but we'll see it could be a lot of different things but again Naming the icon theater, there's only so much the imagination can go for. Now I mentioned earlier is about frame timings, how I believe that Prism is a sort of communication layer between a computer and Steam VR and a chip on side of an upcoming Valve HMD. Well, uh, not too long ago, I, I, I did a video talking about a new string called um, Remote Frame Timings. So if you open Steam VR and uh, on a window, there will be like you know you can see the actual frame timings on the graph. Um, and they'll tell you what type of frame timings they are. They'll tell you if they're reprojected or just missed frames, dropped frames, uh, hit frames. Well, a brand, one, a brand new one that was added not too long ago was remote frame times, which will be able to tell you which frame times are remote. And usually remote uh, is related to wireless or, or at least communication between a host and a, a server. So this is something that, again, I think is very related to Prism um, and why I think Prism is related to what I said because the headset chip would probably be able to communicate uh, to the computer and say, hey, uh, I'm missing this frame because you're not compressing things correctly or whatever, and be able to change the actual um, compression algorithm or how much things are compressed um, to the PC. Again, that's a, a huge speculation thing, but there's, I mean, frame timings is now actually translated into a bunch of languages. So it is a feature that is definitely being pursued by Valve. <laughs> You don't translate something like this to a bunch of languages unless it's important. Speaking of visual overhaul, while we don't have anything related to what the new UI in SteamVR 2 would look like, 
we're getting something that hasn't been added for years. In fact, uh, probably the last time that a change of this magnitude happened was when the Valve Index released. Valve added two new Skybox textures, uh, a blue one and a gray one, that will be applied to the, not SteamVR Home, do not, SteamVR Home is its own app, do not confuse that, but related to the kind of loading area or if you have SteamVR Home disabled, it's, it's that empty space. Previously, it would just be a bunch of mountains in a dark area, but now they're just going like with a very uh, minimalistic view, very similar to how the Steam Deck UI looks. If you rename the files right now in Steam VR, they're in your resources folder. You can actually apply those uh, skyboxes to get a hint of what they look like right now. Um, I feel like they're going to do a lot more than these, just these skyboxes, but for now we just have that. But very exciting, a visual overhaul would be very welcome, um, even if it's just to something like the loading VR environment. Very cool. Another thing related to visuals and stuff is Valve has been adding a ton of different shaders to Steam VR itself. Again, this is just a Steam VR, and that's very confusing how shaders work with just that uh, program. But we have stuff related to uh, simplified gamma, uh, simplified reflect, tracked camera reprojection, which again is related to uh, pass through camera. So they have more shaders added for that. And an interesting one I really want to point out is they added a Gaussian blur. I was talking earlier about how um, there was an eye tracking patent related to foveated rendering. And one of the big key things about that patent is they wanted to apply a Gaussian blur to the outer peripheral to make the actual, uh, the, the, like let's say they're rendering outside your periphery worse than your, your, your center peripheral obviously. Well, they can apply a blur outside of that to make it seem more convincing and a lot more like there's death happening. So when I see a Gaussian blur, I just look back at that patent and I'm like, that's gotta be it, right? <laughs> Maybe. Now finally, we have one more thing. I'm gonna drop my notes and just point to my wallpaper that's behind me. Now I got people very up in arms, um, not really seriously, but I was I found this file in a folder that Valve really never uses. It was in such a strange place, and even now that we know that it is a stock image, this, this bouquet um, PNG, which bouquet, basically what bouquet is, is if you are um, focusing on something and outside your, your focusal area, there's a defocused area and there's light coming from that, um, there's a natural effect with your eyes and cameras that kind of has this bouquet effect. And they added this PNG texture thing in a random folder in Steam VR. And while I still don't know what they're gonna be using it for, maybe something related visuals to Steam VR, it's still in a very weird folder. Um, yeah, maybe we'll know in the future, but for now, I think we can just laugh at the fact that I got people very excited and, and getting crazy over the fact that Valve just placed a stock image in a folder in SteamVR. That's how this stuff happens. You know, they, 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 like, they like to watch us rats scramble. I'm sure they laugh every time this crap happens. Anyway, that's the, pretty much the big overview of everything I noticed that's uh, most notably changed with the SteamVR beta. Of course, if there's any more stuff that's added with SteamVR betas, if there's a lot of stuff, of course, I will make another video. But for now, that's pretty much everything. If you have any questions about Decker or what I think will be in uh, Val's next HMD or really just SteamVR 2.0, uh, leave a comment and I will try to answer as many as I can. And uh, have a great day. Okay. Okay. <laughs>